Hello everyone, I am Shubham Garg and welcome back to the series of DSCS tutorials. Alright, and in this tutorial we are going to see how to make an inverter using DSCH and we will see in detail the working of an inverter. Alright, so first of all you need to open your DSCH and as I did now uh, you need to go to properties and remove the slash system or slash IEEE whatever written is uh, whatever is written after DSCH and click OK. So now you can uh, drag the symbols from this symbol library. Alright. Okay, so as you know, uh, to make an inverter, we require two transistors that are complementary to each other. One is PMOS and one is NMOS and both should be connected in series. Alright. So I will just drag one PMOS and I will drag an NMOS and I'm going to show uh, the pin names, all right? So just click on show pin names, double click here and check this show pin names option. Okay, so now here we have a PMOS and an NMOS. Now we know that uh, when a PMOS, when a PMOS is given zero, it gives strong one. And when NMOS is given one as the input, it gives strong zero value, all right? And PMOS is a weak zero, and NMOS is a weak one. All right, uh, I will just open the previous, open the previous example where we have seen uh, strong zero and weak one concept. All right, so I will just use PMOS as I said, strong one and weak zero. So if you remember this previous uh, video, here we are saying when we apply zero we are getting strong one as an output. When we apply one, we get weak zero. All right, similarly, uh, the opposite is in the case of NMOS. So now we will use both PMOS and NMOS to create an inverter so that we get the both the properties of PMOS and NMOS. So I'm just again dragging this PMOS and NMOS since I close that schematic. So now click on show pin names. Okay, it's uh, your wish if you want to show pin names or not. I'm just showing for better understanding. Okay, now we need to connect this PMOS and NMOS to series. And to do that, just connect the drain terminals of PMOS and NMOS using this wire. Okay, and next thing what we need to do is we need to supply VDD and ground. So uh, just drag and drag this supply and connect it here towards the source of PMOS that is RVDD and here drag this ground to connect to the source of NMOS. Okay, so this is our VDD and this is our ground. And now, as we all know, we see the truth table of uh, an inverter. What we want is uh, when we give one value as an input, we should get a zero as an output. And when we get zero, give zero as an input, then we should get one as an output. That is the output should be inverted of the input. Okay. So that means there is only one input and one output. So for the inverter, connect both the gate terminals together, okay, using the wire. And now we will provide one input at the gate terminal, uh, both these gate terminals which are connected through a wire and one output through these drain terminals. Okay, so for the input, just drag this button and drag it here. And for the output, drag this LED. Okay. So now just use wire to connect the button to the input and here the LED to the, to the output. Okay. So now all our connections are made. You can see there is a PMOS and an NMOS in series. Both are connected to VDD and ground. Input is there and for output there is an LED. So this is our inverter. Okay. You can see uh, both the MOSFETs are complementing each other. One is PMOS and one is the NMOS. Okay, the network which is above uh, this output is called as pull-up network, and the network which is below this output is known as pull-down network. Okay, because pull-up network is going to give us the strong one value, and pull-down network is going to uh, give strong zero value. So basically. Uh, the pull-up network is pulling the value up towards the 1 and pull-down network is pulling the value down towards 0. Okay, so let's just run the simulation 
and see if our schematic is working properly or not. So just click this green icon saying run simulation and you see when uh, there is no input that is zero input the output is high. That means the value is getting inverted. Okay, and it is a strong one. You see LED is glowing properly. Now when I give one as the input, okay, you see there is strong zero, no weak zero or weak one. Okay, uh, that is we are getting strong zero and strong one and which is complementing to the input. That is if input is one, the output is zero. If input is zero, the output is one. So now if we see the understanding of why this is happening, so uh, we will go towards the detail in NMOS, in the working of PMOS and NMOS. If you have watched my previous video, you should have known that when we supply zero to PMOS, then it becomes short circuited. Okay. So as there is zero to PMOS, it becomes short circuited and thus this VDD, this thing flows here and gets towards the output. Whereas when we supply zero to NMOS, it becomes open circuited. Hence, no zero value is flowing here because it is open circuited. Similarly, when we supply one to NMOS, then PMOS becomes open circuited and no voltage value, this VDD value is flowing uh, towards the LED, but the NMOS becomes short circuited. Okay. And the value from here, the ground, this flows towards the output that is we get zero as the output. So this is how NMOS is working. That is when we are supplying zero, we get one as the output. And when we supply one, we get zero as the output. So this is the working of NMOS using CMOS logic that is complementary MOSFET logic. Complementary because you can see the pull up network is complementing the pull down network. Okay. So this is how uh, we will be designing various other schematics, logic gates, NAND gates, AND gates, and a uh, lot of complex circuits. Okay, to get the basic understanding of CMOS logic design, then we will move to other logic designs like pseudo NMOS logic or other logic designs as well. So this is all for this video. See you guys in the next video.